Good day viewers, Deadmill23. I've made this video a couple of times, I'm going to squeeze it into 10 minutes, it's a bit tough. This is a response to Nephilim Free. Nephilim Free made a video. In that video, there was three layers in the video, three nested layers, which I need to explain. First, there was Nephilim's video, and in that video, he asks you to watch a video clip that is of a creationist video, and within the creationist video, there is a, another video that you watch, which is, I'll refer to as the Nova video. Nephilim Free asks you to watch this video, and then really consider, deep, deeply consider, whether you can trust evolutionary scientists after watching this video. I will quickly give you my thoughts on that, and after watching the video, I was, my trust in evolutionary scientists was not shaken at all, and neither was my acceptance of the theory of evolution. You said that perhaps, you know, my acceptance, our acceptance, people's acceptance of this theory might be based on faith, just on faith. Well, I know what's going on inside my head, and it's not based on faith. It is based on um, the validity beyond reasonable doubt. That is what it is based on. Okay, I accept it because it is valid beyond reasonable doubt. Okay. What was the, uh, the whole rigmarole? What was all this about? In the creationist video, a creationist person starts talking about Lucy and then shows us a, another video, the Nova video, which is from a TV show. In that video, there is a reconstruction of an actual event that took place where a scientist gets a hold of Lucy's hip bone, makes a plaster cast, and then proceeds to take it apart, attack it with an angle grinder, and smoosh it all back together in a way that seems to imply that Lucy was bipedal. Now, here I will freely admit that the, although the Nova video was trying to propose the validity of evolution, they did it in a very inept way. And they come across as unbelievable. It does come across as flippant and unbelievable. The um, audience in the creationist video, because they're also watching the Nova video, laugh. They burst out laughing because it is unbelievable. However, as I said, that didn't sway me because I'm looking past all of that rubbish. However, I do concede that it warrants further investigation. Now I ask you, Neff, do you think the people, the creationists in that video, do you think the creationists presenting that video did any further investigation. I would have to say, well, no, they didn't. And if they did, they certainly didn't tell us about it. And then one level up, I ask you, did you just accept that creationist video, or did you do any further investigation into it? You didn't offer the other side of the story, so I'd have to assume that perhaps you just took it on face value that the creationist was right. You took it on face value, you had took it on faith. Which was the exact thing that you were accusing us of. Okay. So, I did do a little bit of further investigation. And I investigated other creationist websites for information about this Lucy deal. And the other creationist websites that I came across with information about it didn't have any more information, didn't have any additional information relating to this, this story. They basically just repeated the, the Nova TV show's account of the situation. I did come across one article though this article is called Creationist Claims About the, Reconstruct the Reconstruction of Lucy's Pelvis. 
And this is exactly addressing the point, exactly the point that you were making. The guy who wrote it, G.P. Jellison, um, had the exact question in his mind, you know, was this scientist, if you'll pardon the pun, monkeying with the evidence? Now, I put a lot more, I give a lot more credulity to this guy than I do to the video that you presented. Why? <coughs> First reason is, this guy's got references. There's a whole chunk of references down the, down the end of his article. The creationist video that you were watching gave no references. In fact, the only reference really that they had was a TV show. And they were basing the, the truth or validity of a, a particular individual, a Dr. Owen Lovejoy, off a TV show. And, in fact, a very inept, ineptly scripted TV show. And that's where I think, Neff, you might have been putting your trust as well. Okay. Um, I will put up a link to this article. Now, I've got to read you a couple of highlights. Firstly, uh, the next sorry point where I think that the, um, the article is more credible than the Nova TV show and the creationist who presented it because this guy, J.P. Jellison, guess who he talks to? He talks to Dr. Owen Lovejoy to get the story straight from the horse's mouth. Who is Dr. Owen Lovejoy? Dr. Lo Lovejoy is a pres professor of anthropology at Kent State University. He is also an adjunct professor of anatomy at the anatomy at the Northeastern Ohio University's College of Medicine, a member of the Department of Orthopedic Surgeons at Case Western University. He is a technical advisor to the coroner's office at Cuyahoga County, Cleveland. People's lives literally depend on the integrity and the accuracy of his scientific analysis. He has published more than 100 articles in scientific publications and was recently elected to the National Academy of Sciences, one of the top scientific honours in the nation. Okay, you know, old boys network, yeah, you could say that. Giant conspiracy, yeah, you could say that. But of course, there's no evidence for that, is there? All right, um, the whole article has lots of photographs and diagrams and a full explanation of what Do Dr. Lovejoy did and why he did it. He says here, it doesn't take a PhD in anatomy to see that the, p the pelvis, Lucy's pelvis, um, a portion of Lucy's pelvis has been rotated through 90 degrees. And he shows you an a picture. And yes, indeed, the top of the pelvis is squished. And he says here that it just wouldn't function as a pelvis if left like that. The next thing that he, another thing that they say is that before the pelvis was reconstructed, they had evidence that Lucy was bipedal because Lucy's knee joint, they could see, had as a locking mechanism. Bipedal people, humans, have locking mechanisms in your knees. When you stand and walk, your knee locks. A chimpanzee, as they explain in here, does not have a locking mechanism in its knee. Thus, when a chimpanzee walks on two legs, its back legs, it has to walk with its knees bent. And this is very strenuous and tiring, and they can't keep it up for long. So, before they'd even done the, the reconstruction of the hip, they had evidence that it was bipedal. And as he says here, all he did was what any human would do who wants to keep a teacup that they've dropped and broken. Not only that, he says that the experiment is entirely reproducible. Anybody, any expert with some glue can take apart the squished hip and reconstruct it as he did. Now, did he attack that hip with an angle grinder one weekend and come up with his half-assed um, conclusion? No, he, said he, he had a team with him and they spent six months reconstructing that hip. So, look, maybe, Neff, you 
you might have to ask yourself the very same question that you asked us. Can creationists be, be trusted? What do you think of the article? Is it a giant conspiracy? All part of a giant conspiracy? Or do some professional scientists who know what they're doing actually consider what they they talk about and and come up with some valid conclusions? You might have to ask yourself the same question yet. Alright, thanks for watching.